I'm back! Hi everyone! It's Brenna again. Uh, this is part two of my Celio portfolio on children with hair loss. And right now I just wanted to go over the description of how this whole journey of this went. So, at first I had this little cocky attitude of, yeah, fundraising, I'm going to be able to do this. And this is like coming back from the shoebox and me crying and we figured out what I was going to do. Um, they needed help on a fundraiser, which I stated earlier, a golf scramble. And I came back realizing that it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. So I started going and calling businesses like at the same time. So I was kind of like calling some businesses and like some around me that I thought were convenient. I was going to and then... I wasn't getting any luck, and it was kind of scary. I thought I was in for failure. And then I realized with that attitude, I wasn't getting anywhere fast either, so I just kept pushing. I really had to learn time management this semester, especially with this nonprofit organization, as well as obviously other things going on in my life. But it was definitely a hurdle for me to find time to go out and do all of this. Because I'm a person that rather either talk on the phone or talk in person. But I rather talk in person because I can get a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody. And my chances are higher, at least to me, to persuade them when they see my movements and my excitement about the whole thing. Um, I could sit here and tell you that I went to about 120 businesses. Or I could just tell you... Like, that it was very hard, and I got a lot of doors slammed on me. I got a lot of people that kind of, I don't know, like, cussing me out. I got a lot of people that weren't really interested or didn't have the time and money to do this. Which, that's okay. I actually did get a good turnout, though, on the better side of things. And I'd rather share that instead of every single place that I went to, because that would take us hours, and I know no one really wants to hear that. So, cutting to the chase really fast... I went to, um, which was my first $100 sponsor, which I freaked out and I was really excited about, from Tim Montemir for um, TJ Money Productions. He gave me a $100 sponsorship for children with hair loss, and I was very excited because I dressed up really nice and had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him, and he's the uh, office manager and boss of his own company that he started and he pretty much does like photo booths and event plans and also has uplighting that he does or does sorry for rooms and it's really interesting like I was really happy to get a sponsorship from them because maybe in the future that might be a network that children with hair loss could possibly call to use to kind of also repay them for using them as a sponsor for their fundraisers. He could possibly plan it or like add photo booth or uplighting to it. It would be really cool. Uh, another $100 sponsor that I was really excited to get was Big B Coffee in Southgate. He, the uh, manager there was very nice. He was kind of iffy at first about giving me a sponsorship, but I think I really got him when I was like, you know, this is helping kids and it's a really good business because, like, I was shocked I got them because they're, like, a franchise. And that's like getting McDonald's. Like, I don't know how I got that, but I was, like, so grateful that they were looking for something at the end of my bargain and my little spiel I had to give. And he was just all for it after that, and he said, let me go grab you a check, and I only have some cash. And I think that might have been a little bit why, but still, I was really happy to get them on board. And last but not least, I kind of had to wait a little bit to make this video before I go off to California. Um, I went to a jujitsu place randomly after the other day I tried really hard to get one more sponsor because like I have OCD problems and it was really bothering me that I didn't have another sponsor like I got two hundred dollars but my goal was three hundred dollars so it was kind of like itching at me and I was like I really need to just go try because if I don't try it's gonna bother me so I was really happy that I ended up going out and looking a little bit further because randomly a jujitsu place that was next to Jets when I was hungry and got pizza said yeah and I'm really excited and he was super cool and 
he gave me another hundred dollar sponsor because all I was really asking for was a hundred dollar sponsors. Oops, my bad. But I wanted to go big and get it done as fast as possible because I am on a time schedule and it's better than me coming home with five twenties from five different places to make a hundred dollars when I want my goal to just be solid hundreds, which I've been lucky enough to do. Um, other things that I've also accomplished with this is getting like gift certificates and basket raffle items. Uh, the Rustic Manor was a good one. They gave me like a piss or a, a picnic basket. They gave me a um, a mirror. They gave me a four built tough like basket. They were really giving. And that was in Taylor. Uh, I got another basket, too, from, uh, what's it called? Body Massage for You. And they also gave me a certificate for a free massage, which I think would be pretty cool to win at the golf scramble for the golfers. I got Buffalo Wild Wings. They did a 50-piece wing thing, as well as Hooters with a t-shirt. Um, Angelina's did a $20 gift card, and I also got, it's really hard to remember these off the top of my head, bear with me, um, AT&T car wash tickets, and I know that's not a lot, but to figure in, like, about four months to get all of that stuff, and luckily go through that many people to get some stuff I was really happy with my turnout I was so happy to do what I did because honestly it kind of made me realize the kind of person I was with my communication skills I kind of started off like scared and not sure what to say and as I got through with it, I started to get more used to what I was saying and what I was doing and how I wanted to pitch everything and had a better confidence because I was retaining the information and actually being able to remember it and like kind of explain it out loud after saying it so many times to people that it was almost like I made my own pitch after saying it over and over and over. Um, but it also made me get out and dress professionally and prepare myself to see what other people were going to think of me when I talk to them and for me to get negative and positive feedback it kind of showed me that like people are like food and not everybody's your taste and that's kind of how I took this fundraiser I was like wow like there's a lot of people out there that don't really acknowledge that it's a good cause or they do but to get people to do it it makes me really happy that this was a good turnout Granted, there was a lot of people that said no. I just have to be thankful for the ones that said yeah. It taught me a lot about how to kind of look at situations and understand other people, but also understand myself the most. How I talk to other people used to be very fast and anxious, in which I still kind of do, but I think when I'm serious now I have a better repertoire of myself and I am able to go out and just kind of sell it like that's my kind of thing like yes okay let's do this and I am just happy that I got to go out and do this because it got me more out of my comfort zone than I thought like it's one thing to talk about something in front of a group of people but it's another thing to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation when you're the only one to blame if something comes out wrong <laughs> Um, I have to say that I am very grateful to be working with children with hair loss and the people, Regina, Kristen, Linda, they were all so sweet to me. I had a great time and they really accepted me for who I was and they were very positive and I was more than happy to work with them to help a cause greater than myself.